Hi, today we've got a package from PCB Way, and hopefully these are the power supply PCBs for my millimeter wave sensors. And yeah, so here they are looking pretty good. Unfortunately delayed a little bit by DHL. For some reason it took a very strange route around the world, adding about five days to the delivery time. But uh, it's got here in the end and these are looking very nice indeed. And I think we've got a few extras. I think I counted 18 boards. I only requested 15, so we've got a few spares as well. But obviously this is the PCB that it's replacing in those millimeter wave sensors. And it looks like we've got all the measurements right. Uh, it looks like the terminal block is in the right place there as well so it should end up in the housing in exactly the right place the only thing I'm noticing here is these slots which the sensor board slide into they look a little bit narrower than the ones on the original board so I might end up having to just open these up very slightly which is a little bit unfortunate but um, should be able to do that with the Dremel and some dust extraction but other than that I think they're looking pretty good so let's get on with the assembly and then we can give these a quick test. So that went together pretty well, we'll give it a test in a moment, but unfortunately I think I measured the thickness of this board incorrectly. I thought it was a 1mm board, but in fact it's 1.2, so although these slots are in the right place, it's just not going to go through those holes, so we're going to have to open them up slightly. Also there's almost a clash between this capacitor and the inductor, I think it will clear it just fine, but I think I'm going to have to open these up just slightly, probably with an engraver tip on the Dremel I think might be the easiest way or maybe some emery cloth if I can cut some to that size. So I'll just try and open that up now. And so yeah, a little bit of emery cloth there. I just whizzed that through for a couple of seconds and that opened it up perfectly. And now as you can see, that board slides in there and works quite well. Fortunately, we avoided the clash. I didn't even notice this capacitor when I was designing this PCB. So if I'd moved this inductor any further up, we'd be in trouble a little bit. Um, so fortunately, We've done all right there, but before we solder that in place, I will give this PCB a test. We want to make sure that we're actually getting 5 volts out, uh, rather than blasting this board and blowing it up in the first go. So let's power it up and see what it looks like. Right, so we've got it hooked up to the power supply with a current limit of about 50 milliamps or so. So let's turn it on. And we've got both LEDs on. Hold on, let me think about that. Um, the output LED shouldn't be on. Ah, so I switched out the transistor here. It was an NPN transistor in the original design, and I happen to have some FDB303N N-channel MOSFETs. There's no pull-down on this PCB, so this is just floating. And yeah, so if I touch the gate resistor with my finger that is flickering and I'm able to put it into different states because I'm acting like an antenna for the mains around the room. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully this output on here is a push-pull driver um, because I didn't put a pull-down resistor. Otherwise, we'll have to swap it out for an MPN because with the MPN transistor, you need an actual current flowing through the base to turn on the output. So we'll test that in a minute. But uh, we do have an output there. Let's check what the output voltage is. It should be pretty much 5 volts on the dot. And yeah, 5.071. So absolutely no problems there. So I think we can solder this up and then we'll see if that output LED sorts itself out. There we go, so that's soldered together. We've got a nice 90 degrees on there. Let's check it still fits in the housing. And yep, yeah, that's all correct. And we've got our terminal block in the right place, all lined up perfectly. We will need to change the label on here. We've got a, a transistor output here, and this is obviously 12 to 24 volts input. But I think we can test that now and just check that output works properly. And the output LED, it's fading off there. They've got the red LED on here. It should go to blue. So it's connected to the Zigbee coordinator. And then the output light has turned on because it's detected me in the room. Now, I wonder if that slow fade off was a high impedance state while the microcontroller was initializing. Uh, if I remember correctly, I can control this from Home Assistant. Let me just have a quick look. Yeah, so it's connected on Home Assistant. And if I click this button, we should turn the output off. Yeah and on, and then off. Yeah, so it's a proper push-pull driver, so we don't need any pull-down resistor, and I don't need to swap that transistor out. Now, just looking at the power supply, with the output turned off, it's drawing about 22 milliamps from the 24 volt supply, and I think that was sitting at about 100 milliamps from the 5 volt supply, so the DC to DC is doing its job, uh, and then when I turn the output on, that just increases by about 3 milliamps or so. Now I set the optocoupler LED current to about 15 milliamps or so to make sure that this output turns on fully uh, so that all seems to line up and make sense. So I think we can put everything all back in the housing and test it properly. Right, so that's all back together again and you wouldn't know it had been molested which was the whole idea. I wanted this to look uh, exactly as it did from factory. And also, I've hooked up a small load just to test the output properly. So bearing in mind the transistor on the optocoupler has an output rating of about 150 milliamps or so, you can use it to drive small loads directly. And also it's an optocoupler, so the outputs are completely isolated from uh, the supply voltage for the sensor. So that means you can use it as a high side or a low side switch at any DC voltage, uh, anywhere within, I think it's three and three quarter kilovolts difference between these two that's what the optocoupler is rated for so you can use it on a different supply if you want to uh, but let's turn it on and the lamp turns on briefly while it's initializing and then it's connected to zigbee and then it should turn on when it detects me yeah there we go so it detects me a couple of seconds later and the output is now on so that all seems to be working properly which means i can now assemble the rest of the boards. I'm going to have about eight of these units uh, so I can assemble those all up and use them with my home automation system. Now one thing I will do is I'll upload the PCB design with the slightly amended PCB cutouts here onto the PCB Way website so I'll put a link in the description down below if you did want to order these boards and this sensor. One nice thing about uh, PCB Ways website as you can share your projects if you want to. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to visit PCB Way if you're thinking about getting some nice PCBs made. And until next time, thanks for watching.